Hello there, and welcome to another character profile. Everybody has their favorite Disney sidekicks. Some have a preference for Jiminy Cricket, while others like Louis the Alligator, and Tinkerbell has her fans as well. However, if you were to ask me who my favorite Disney sidekicks are, I would have to say they are without a doubt Timon and Pumbaa from The Lion King. Ever since I first saw that epic blockbuster on its initial release back in 1994, they were the characters that I enjoyed the most, and that is still the case today. It's particularly impressive that even with the Mouse House always milking them, they have not worn out their welcome. So, let's take a look at the history of these two very funny characters. Timon and Pumbaa, much like the rest of the film, were inspired by William Shakespeare's play Hamlet. Much like Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, they serve as the comic relief of the piece, giving advice to Simba while also giving comedic asides. However, unlike their Shakespearean counterparts, they aren't working for the protagonist's scheming uncle. As for their species, Timon is a meerkat and Pumbaa is a warthog, and the odd pairing is actually something right out of the classic comedy, with Timon being the thin best friend to the pudgy Pumbaa. But they are definitely the best of best of friends. They also share the philosophy of Hakuna Matata that they hand out to Simba, which means, no worries. This then leads to one of the most memorable and beloved songs from The Lion King, in which Timon and Pumbaa introduce Simba to their way of life, and he grows up with them. Originally, Elton John and Tim Rice wrote a different song to be sung in this scene called Warthog Rhapsody, and as much as I really like Hakuna Matata, this wouldn't have been a bad song for them to sing either. Timon and Pumbaa were also going to sing Can You Feel the Love Tonight, in its entirety, but Elton John ultimately killed that idea, and so they only sing the beginning and end of the song. Interesting enough, Tim Rice really wanted Rick Mayle and Adrian Edmondson to voice the roles, as he was a big fan of the television series Bottom. But in the end, the filmmakers went with Nathan Lane and Ernie Sabella. Originally, they were going to voice the hyenas, but the directors felt that Timon and Pumbaa were a better fit. As much as I really like Bottom, and they would have been interesting choices, I honestly think Lane and Sabella were perfect. In a way, I credit Lane's extremely funny voice work as to why Timon is probably one of my top five favorite Disney characters, and probably why I'm usually connected with that meerkat at such a young age. Here's a bit of trivia for you. Pumbaa is actually a major historical character in the history of the House of Mouse, as being the first Disney animated character to have a flash lens problem. Naturally, with how beloved these characters are, Disney sought to quickly cash in on them. In 1995, an animated series starring the duo was produced, and despite taking on a more red and stimpy style approach to the material, and sharing extremely little continuity with The Lion King, it was still a fun and enjoyable show. The use of modern devices didn't bother me, and I enjoyed their treks around the world. While you got to see Simba, Rafiki, Zazu, and the Hyenas, there were also a number of new characters that Timon and Pumbaa encountered on their journeys, like the evil explorer Quint, and Speedy the Snail. The series went on for an impressive 7 seasons and 85 episodes, way above the 65 episode limit Disney used to give their animated programming. Naturally, when The Lion King made a leap to the Broadway stage, Timon and Pumbaa went along with it. For Timon, they applied a Japanese puppetry technique by having the actor wearing camouflage and holding a giant puppet. For Pumbaa, they put the actor in a giant Pumbaa head, and he could even move the mouth around. Hey, it's Julie Tamer. What character designs were you expecting? Though, if you haven't seen the Broadway musical, it's phenomenal and a must-see. For The Lion King 2, Simba's Pride, they return to eat more insects, provide their usual funny asides, and also become a babysitter to Simba's daughter, Kiara. This is one of the rare, good Disney direct-to-video sequels, and neither Timon nor Pumbaa have lost any of what made them funny and appealing characters. After getting their own television series, it was only deserving that our favorite Meerkat and Warthog were then honored with starring roles in a feature film. Thus came The Lion King One and a Half, another one of the good efforts from the Disney Toon Studios. Taking the same approach that was given to their inspiration in Tom Stoppard's Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are Dead, this is a twist on The Lion King as it looks at the film from their point of view. Ignoring the continuity of the show, this again shows how the two of them met, got to know Simba, and you see that non-canon impact on the original classic. Again, Lane and Sabella have no perfect chemistry, and most of the jokes thrown at us manage to hit more than they miss. The songs are great too, one of which is adapted from Warthog Rhapsody. 
Overall, it really develops their relationship and really shows how much they care for each other. So while it's very funny, it also hits the right emotional notes as well. If you're a big fan of Timon and Pumbaa like I am, this is highly recommended as a Disney sequel that does work. In recent years, Timon and Pumbaa have become safety instructors in a series of videos produced by Disney Educational Productions and are also currently sponsors for 3D Blu-ray players. And this September, you'll get to see the pair coming at you in the third dimension when The Lion King is re-released at your local multiplex. In conclusion, there is a reason why these two have endeared for as long as they have. While they could have disrupted the flow in a film as dark as The Lion King, they actually proved to be important parts of the plot in shaping Simba the way he is. Did I also mention that they're really funny? Well, see you next time. And remember, Hakuna Matata.